Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kieran. I like to help people using a spiritual perspective. Today I wanted to talk about uh, how to move forward without your twin flame in your physical life. Um, this could also apply to generally any sort of circumstance or relationship. Um, overall, it's just a message of how to move forward by yourself despite the pain that you might be experiencing in the current moment or the confusion, lack of clarity type of things. So I'm just going to get right into it uh, as I usually do. And the first thing I put down is following your life purpose. Now, assuming that you know your life purpose or that you have some general direction of which you would like to head in, even if it is something as simple as an idea or, you know, maybe it could be just, I uh, would like to write a book, or maybe you're going back to school, maybe you're starting something new. But generally speaking, uh, it is something in which you are looking forward to, something that is meant for you, something that you're desiring to do, whatever your specific life purpose is at that moment. If you follow it, you will actually be able to let go of the pain um, more, let's say, like, more completely, more readily. Um, following your life purpose allows you to detach in a way from your twin flame. It allows you to go forward knowing that what you're doing is for you, knowing that you're meant to be doing it, knowing that you're heading in a direction in which your future seems to be in front of you. You're no longer heading side to side, direction to direction, or looking back, uh, especially at your twin who may have left you out in the cold or that type of feeling, right? So when you follow your life purpose, whatever it may be, you're filled with a new type of energy and that new energy carries you into new directions uh, where you meet new people, where you experience new things. And so following your life purpose it truly will allow you to, uh, will allow you to move forward without the constant chatter inside of your head, without the constant remorse and feelings of pain and guilt and the questions of what if and how come and all of those things that keep you up at night. Following your life purpose is almost like a distraction, um, a good distraction in, in the sense that it gives you something to focus on other than what you don't know and what you can't control. And when you let go of what you can't control and what you don't know, um, recognizing that in the moment you probably aren't meant to know it, and just focus on what you can control, which is your life pur purpose, your actions, naturally um, the more that you do that and when you get into that flow, uh, the things that were holding you back before no longer seem to hold you back and the questions tend to come, uh, or the answers I mean tend to come to those questions before, um, except now they're, they're, you, you, don't, you weren't really asking them so they come more naturally, right? You'll just be sleeping, or not sleeping, but laying in bed one day and the questions that you're asking so many times over and over and over again might just come to you quite naturally because you haven't asked them in a couple months and you've just been focusing on yourself, right? So it's a really good way of just moving forward without them knowing that um, that you're doing you, that you're you're putting out a best effort that you can into the universe, uh, putting out that energy, right? Number two is uh, trusting in the unknown trusting in the universe, trusting in something other than yourself. Again, just kind of like what, what I was just saying there about how they might not, um, or the things that you can't control. Uh, there's so much that, that you don't know. There's so much that I don't know. There's so much about my own life and about my own connection to either a twin flame or um, just the different spiritual experiences and questions that I might have that keep me up a lot. Um, there's at some point it becomes so um, mundane and repetitive and pedantic that it, it, you just can't you, you literally can't do anything like it just forces you to kind of give up on the expectation of finding an answer because no matter how many times that you may even meditate or how many times that you may just sit in silence while you might feel more peace generally speaking what, what tends to happen is, uh, is you, you don't necessarily get the answers you just feel okay not having them at the moment. And that's a really hard thing to try and deal with, especially with a dynamic like um, as powerful as a twin flame, is you often want to uh, have an answer right away because of your mind not being able to handle the sheer amount of pressure and questions that are flooding um, around.
around your head, right? It causes a lot of headaches, a lot of confusion, stress, uh, sleepless nights, stuff like that. But if you can trust in the universe to deliver you the answers that you need in the time that it, it would be, uh, or that it would behoove you the most, then you can sort of relax a little bit. You can allow yourself to relax. And, and you know, again, by focusing on your uh, what your life purpose is, you naturally fall into the state of what your flow is. Because um, flow is uh, sort of like, it's a very hard thing for me to understand sometimes because I'm a classic overthinker, classic, um, I'm a very impatient type of person. So allowing yourself to fall into that rhythm of your own state of being to kind of just sit back and fall into your own grace naturally allows you to decide that the stuff that you're so worried about would be better off um, kind of away from you. The stuff that you're so constantly thinking about and stressing over would be better if the answers came to you in a more natural state. Um, trusting in the universe to allow that to unfold. Trusting that your twin flame will be back. Trusting that um, no matter what is going on in the physical, at some point, they would have to come back. I think it's a really hard thing to experience. Um, I think in any relationship, it's really hard. I think that if you can remember times in your life where things worked out despite them not working out for a little bit or a long time or however long it was that might inspire some hope i like to think about the show the office um jim and pam their relationship their dynamic from season one up until whenever they uh ended up getting together or going on their date however that was season four or five, i think it was around that time anyway point is the reason that i mention it is that you know they were friends, Jim liked her, you know, she was afraid to admit her feelings, uh, she was dating somebody else, engaged to somebody else, um, you know, Jim left the, uh, left, uh, he confessed his feelings for her, she rejected him, he left, dated somebody else, and she had left her um, fiancé at the time, and eventually the two come back together, and so you, you can sort of see from a very objective standpoint about how all of that all of that um, that dance, so to speak, between the two, if you want to consider them the two souls of those two people, how, how long it took for them to get together, you know, three or four seasons, three or four years type of thing, for them to finally get together type of thing, right? Um, and, that, and that's sort of the thing, is trusting that all of it will work out in the end, regardless of if you may not end up with your twin flame, or if you do end up with them, just knowing that the things that you want, the relationship that you desire, that will be provided for you in what I put three, divine timing. Uh, divine timing is just simply with anything that allowing it to happen, knowing that it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen, um, and being kind of grateful that it didn't happen sooner. Um, there's lots of times that I still feel bitter about things not happening to me when I ask them. Um, but I do get it. I do understand it on a, a, on a intuitive uh, level. My mind, ego, sometimes obviously will get in the way of that. But I do get it as a uh, as a lesson, as a message, as a higher sort of uh, truth. I do understand that um, quite painfully. So, but so allowing divine timing is just allowing things to happen in their natural state, um, letting go and giving up of the pain that's constricting you to uh, limiting energy to this moment where you're not actually being free no matter how justified you are in your feelings and trust me i often feel very very justified in uh the pain and the anger and stuff but eventually it does come to a point where you realize that you cannot move forward anymore if you're still living with that energy inside of you it doesn't matter what has happened to you who has done what to you it is ultimately your responsibility to move forward and to create the life that you desire from your imagination, from your dreams. You know, you are the magician type of thing. So that's an extremely hard thing to do, but allowing that divine timing and just, you know, focusing on, on what you can control uh, and moving forward without them, that, you know, it becomes a more natural state of flow, something that you can actually begin to rely on. You know, it's kind of funny, a paradox in a way is that you rely on the, un, not the unreliable, but you rely on the unknown. You rely on what you can't see with your eyes. Um, you, you feel it, you know, and that's that's what it is. It's a feeling of um, of recognition of, of things are going to be okay. It's literally what they would call faith, right? So for number four, I just put discovery, new awareness. Um, 
I tend to think of that as a sort of uh, experiencing new uh, avenues of your life, right? So moving forward, when you're, you're following your life purpose, you're trusting what you can't see, you're having this faith, you're, um, you know, you recognize divine timing as a play. Uh, the discovering the new awareness comes in that along that uh, along that way of go, going about your life moving forward is that you experience new things. Allowing yourself to move forward means that you experience new things uh, and that you discover new things. And, and as you experience things and as you discover things, you grow as a person. Even if you're not trying to, ultimately things will happen to you that will make you change regardless. Some people change for the worse because of an event where they could have easily changed for the better. Um, and I have an example of Nelson Mandela when he was wrongfully imprisoned. He had all that time. I, I can't remember the specific amount of years. It could have been something huge and long, like 20. I can't remember, but it was a long time. And he, um, and he came out the other side as a better person, somebody who did not hate the people who put them there or put him there in that prison, uh, or he didn't hate the racists. racists. He just tried to, uh, he, he tried to speak about love. He tried to inform and help other people and to, and to just tell them that it wasn't their fault, you know, these, these people. And, and it wasn't because he, he's talking about ignorance. He was talking about the, 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 basically the things that we believe that are so false, that are so fundamentally false about each other, uh, ourselves, the world. And so he became, you know, uh, a really great example of what it means to be a leader. He didn't let the negative thing that happened to him affect him, right? So all these things, you know, the things that you discover, the awareness that you, uh, they'll lead to new awarenesses, they'll lead to new experiences, and ultimately they'll allow you to fall more into that divine timing because you might need to learn just that one thing before you're able to be in union with your twin, or they might be able, or they might have to learn two or three things. However it works, it's really hard to say. You can never know. And that's why worrying about the fact that you don't know is such a such a palpable type of stress because you're so fundamentally and deeply and intuitively aware of what is the truth um, of the connection, and yet it's being denied to you at every single turn, it seems. But naturally, you just want to know why, right? Of course, it makes sense. Uh, I don't think that's such a bad thing to want to know why, but at some point, again, um, you have to remove yourself from that confusion, from that uh, from that lack of clarity. Because the only way that you're ever going to get that clarity, something that I'm really discovering in my own life, is by moving forward, is by allowing the answers to come to you rather than searching for them. Because it just sometimes it just doesn't work like that. You know, some easy things, maybe, you know, um, especially if you're in that natural flow, you know, it's kind of easy to manifest things that you need sometimes. Um, just today I was looking for a stapler, couldn't find a stapler. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't, didn't even know we had a stapler. I was just needed one at the moment. And you know, I kind of let go of it and three or four minutes later I found a stapler. So it's a little example, tiny thing. Sometimes you can ask, you can look for a stapler. Um, but you like kind of let go of it and then you, you, find, you find it, you find what you're looking for. But with something kind of as deep as a relationship or a love, a twin flame, it takes a little bit longer. It takes a lot longer, you know, depending on your definition of what you think a lot is or a little. Um, and so, you know, it really does, yeah, it becomes divine timing. It becomes something that isn't worth stressing about anymore so that you, your only option really is to move forward with your life, uh, knowing that everything will be taken care of when it's taken care of and that you ultimately deserve um, the truth. You deserve an answer, right? And this is sort of something that I'm just going to add in here. I didn't write it down, but I am going to um, say, just because I'm just thinking about it now, um, following your life purpose will allow you to have a better sense of self-worth, allow you to have a more accurate representation of what you believe that you are, what you believe you deserve. And the more that you move forward, you're basically saying, I don't need X, Y, and Z, you know, from your twin flame or whatever it is, um, in order to, in order to give me what I need to move forward, right? Like I have a problem with closure personally, um, over my life, a lot of karmic experiences with not having answers, right? So naturally it would make sense that with my own personal experience, it's, I, I don't get the clarity that I need and I struggle the most with clarity. I struggle the most with, um, 
with that aspect of, uh, of the awakening process of spirituality because um, throughout my life, I was much the opposite of who I am now, or at least the thoughts, right, uh, in my head. Um, I was not spiritual. <clears throat> I used to call people that was into that this sort of stuff uh, quite a few derogatory names, not to their face, of course, behind a keyboard, like a real man. Um, and the others, you know, I was an atheist for a long time. I was raised Catholic, so you can't really blame me because it kind of sucks. And so... You know, there was five or six years where I was like a hardcore atheist type of thing. Um, you know, I didn't believe in any of this stuff. I was very like rigid with the beliefs type of thing. And naturally all that stuff is out of the way now. I never would have thought I'd be talking about Twin Flames to uh, people on YouTube, right? So that self-love, the following your life purpose type of thing, it shows you what you're worth, what you deserve, and ultimately gives you the confidence to move forward knowing that, well, you know what, I don't have time anymore to wait. I don't have time to wait in a situation that's hurting me. So I need to move forward. And if moving forward means moving forward by yourself, by myself, you know, being single, being unattached to people, just working on yourself, that's actually a really, really powerful thing. And you can sort of, you know, you can give, one, you can give yourself a pat on the back for that. And two, Thinking about it from what your soul has done as well is kind of a mirror of what you're now choosing to do or what you would like to do, uh, which is moving forward by yourself, is the soul came here with its entire memory wiped, which is a really brave thing to do, right? I was just watching a couple of videos of that uh, today, um, just reiterating that point, which is why I bring it up, because it's so powerful to think that your soul came here knowing that it would lose touch uh, with itself in order, you know, all in order just for you to help the planet, to help it to grow, to do uh, missions and stuff, you know, and that's a really powerful thing. So again, you know, you, your soul's done it, you're doing it. it. It's that, it's that, um, it's that courage to move forward, even with the pain inside of you, because you can't get rid of the pain overnight. It just doesn't happen. You can, you know, you can breathe and you can watch the pain. You can be aware of it. But ultimately, in order to move forward, you do have to move forward with that pain, with the idea that it will not be there forever, right? And that, that can be a little trap because we like to think that we what's happening to us now is what is going to happen to us, right? But getting into that more flow state, following your life purpose and stuff will allow you to get out of that mindset because one, you won't have time and two, you'll be growing so much that naturally the ways that you have thought about yourself in the world will uh, deviate, will uh, escape from your uh, reality, right? So for the fa uh, fifth one, fourth one, fifth, I don't know what number I'm on, I put uh, being a better you, right? So finally, you're, you're doing this stuff, you know, you made the choice to move forward without your twin flame. You've, decide, you've decided that you are being a better you, that you're going to become something that you are proud of, that that's worth that's worth the time and the effort that you're putting in, something that you've decided for yourself something that will raise your vibration and give you the higher energy that you need, right? And that's that's a tough thing to do. It's a noble thing to do. And ultimately, you know, moving forward by yourself without your twin flame in the physical is it's a choice that is very, very profound and kind of lonely in a sense. But springing from that loneliness comes a, a great, I, I think, awareness and appreciation of who you are as a person. And I think that the only way to really get that out of yourself, to really get that experience is to be alone, is to, is to, is to meet something or someone, right, that so profoundly affects your life and then doesn't give you what you want, forcing you to move forward anyway, right? And it doesn't have to be twin flame. It could be any type of relationship that ends because it's something that you naturally want in the moment and desire, but that is not being given to you, forcing you to move forward on your own. And doing that is such a powerful choice that you can't, there isn't any other option but to be happy. Because being happy is a choice. You know, you decide that I would like to be happy, but you have to move forward. You can't just say, I would like to be happy. And then keep everything the same because you know that state of happiness won't come to you you have to meet it halfway 
you know, and that, that's a really powerful thing too, is that I'm learning a lot in life at my age. Um, my experience, my spiritual awakening is that I kind of have to meet the universe halfway. You know, you can set the attention and head towards it, right? But you can't just, you can't, you can't just say, I want this and kind of do nothing. You know what I mean? Like if you want your twin or you want true love type of thing, you know, you don't have to focus on the other person. You just really have to focus on yourself. You have to focus on, you know, that aspect because the universe will meet you halfway. It will, it will, it will bring you what it is that you want, right? In some form, it might not be the way that you see it or that you think about it, or you thought it was going to look like, but it will bring you that in whatever way it does in its own time. And it will meet you halfway. Like that is the universe meeting you halfway. Is, is And that's kind of the divine timing and trusting in the unknown. It's letting the universe to deal with it because it's too much. It's too much pressure for you. And the only thing that is ever going to make you move forward is the focus that you have now on yourself, right? And that's, that's really the overall kind of message is that following your life purpose, you know, trusting in the unknown, the discoveries, the awareness, the new experiences that come along with that, the self-worth that's developed, trusting in the divine timing, ultimately leading uh, you to become a better version of yourself. All of that is just in tandem with meeting the universe halfway because you're saying ultimately, like, I'm going to do what it is that I have to do, that I want to do, that I need to do, that I love doing, and letting everything else just be decided for you. Because it's too much. It honestly gets to a point where it's too much. And, you know, if you're resonating with this and you're watching this, you might find that you're also in that position, a similar position where you would just like to move forward, where you, you know, where it's being stuck in that energy is too much. It's, it's too, it's holding you back too much. And you need to get into a different state of being in order to have what you truly uh, really want, or even if it's just that feeling, you know? So those are just some ways guide tips sort of thing just to move forward without your twin flame in the physical um you know again divine timing is going to be at work so at some point often you're going to have to move forward by yourself in any situation in life uh, ultimately just teaching you that you know you are okay by yourself uh, relying on that awareness within you relying on the strength that you have inside of your soul relying on your soul to provide for you um and relying on that will, will at some point with divine timing, allow the things that you did want, allow your twin to come back to you. Do you know what I mean? Because again, they have their own stuff that they're working with. You have your own stuff that you're working with. Um, ultimately, you, you really wouldn't want to be with somebody that would treat you like shit. So if they're treating you like shit now, uh, they might not after six months of learning a particular lesson, right? So I, I think in the long term, you would want them in six months because they might be a better version of who they were now because now they just might be kind of like a shitty person they just might be you know what i mean there's no there's people are complicated and they might not really be that complicated but we like to think that we are and people have different things that annoy them that bother them and different reactions different experiences different backgrounds so while you may you know be fine with this they might not be fine with it and it's just a, it's the conflict right and you know you wait you wait and you grow as a person and, and your perception changes and there's changes hopefully right but all you really can do in the end is focus on yourself because the more that you do that the more that you will attract and experience the things that you were hoping to experience and attract anyway right and fortunately or unfortunately that might not be your twin in the moment right you might need to meet somebody else first uh who knows how it goes um but ultimately just moving forward just takes courage, just takes a step, knowing that you'll be taken care of by your soul, uh, by the universe, by your higher self, whatever it is that you choose to um, call it. Right? Okay. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, I hope you guys have a good day. And let me know what you think. Thanks.